let the church say amen. amen. Again, back to the gospel as recorded by John. Going to stay with this for a little while. As we head toward Christmas, I shared with you on last week, I don't want anybody in my charge be celebrating and don't know what you're celebrating. And you, need to, you need to understand what this celebration, if nobody else knows, the people of God ought to understand and know what we're celebrating. Again, right back where we were, John chapter 1. Verses 1 and 2, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And this morning, this morning, if you if you'll allow me, just for a few minutes, you, you're going to be first in line at Magnolia today. You're going to be you're first in line at the Cracker Barrel today. We're going to get out of here. But I, I want <laughs> I want this morning. I want to talk about uh, the Trinity. The, the Trinity, huh? I, I, it's it's doctrine. It's doctrine and. It's what we believe. Don't do near as much of that as we need to do, but this morning I, I want to I wanna talk about the Trinity now. When I was growing up in the Northwestern Baptist Association, the moderator among all the sermons that were done, the moderator would pick different people to do sermons and he would always pick somebody to do what we call the doctrinal sermon. Remember, Anderson, it was hard to get folk to do the doctrinal sermon. And the reason why is because we, we really don't shout and learn at the same time. <laughs> we, we, we shout after we learn, and that's a good thing. Nobody really wanted to deal with doctrine because... That's, in, in, in so many words, it's sort of, you know, nobody gets fired up over teaching. But So today we're doing a doctrinal sermon, so it ain't going to hurt my feelings if nobody shouts. As long as you walk out of here learning something. That, that, that's my, my goal today. So today we're talking about the Trinity. That's a difficult concept. It's a concept that Many believe, some, some don't believe it, but it's what we believe because it is what the Bible says. I just believe, brothers and sisters, that we ought to know what we believe and we ought to know why we believe it. That's why folk can come and just clean out our churches, drag a tent in town and just clean out the church because we don't know what it is. We believe. We believe in the doctrine of the Trinity. Let me set the stage. Let me set the stage. Nearly 35 years ago when Bev and I married, uh, there was a period in our household where Jason and Sheena were a little testy. A little testy at they. They were trying some stuff. And the reason they were doing that is we, we, we got this new person. Daddy got, brought this person in our house. And uh, so now we want to see how the rules will apply. <laughs> and they, they would, uh, on Wednesday night, they would go to bed. This is right after we got married, and they would say to Bev, uh, we don't want to go to church tonight. 
And uh, do we have to go? And Bell would tell him, yes, we, we got to go to church. They would go to Bell and say, um, uh, we, we, uh, we, we don't, we don't, do we have to get up and go? You got a car. Do we have to get up and go to church early with Daddy? Bev said, yes, we, we all going to get up and we're going to go. They were trying her. They were trying. Uh, do we really have to eat all of this box of cereal before we open up a new box? <laughs> they were checking her out. They were checking her out to see if they could find some wiggle room. And she said, Baby, let, let me, and here's the final thing. Let me help you understand. Your daddy and I are one. All right. All right. <laughs> are y'all hearing me? And whatever daddy says is what I say. Are you here? Yeah, the two shall become, are y'all hearing this? Yeah, yeah. Now, now she was still Beverly Ann Billups Haynes. I'm still Richard Benjamin Haynes. Are y'all hearing me? But yeah, while we are two individuals, we were one in essence. I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. Yeah, yeah. So, so whatever he says, I'm going to say the same thing. Whatever she says, I'm going to be saying the same. Are y'all hearing me? There is no division. I'm going somewhere with this. As we move. Toward another celebration of the birth of Jesus, my desire is to do the best I can to make sure that those over who I have charge have uh, understand exactly who and what it is that we are really celebrating. Stated clearly last week that a distinction had to be made between the birth of Jesus. And the beginning of Jesus. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah, this annual celebration, we are celebrating the time that he showed up in a body on earth. But I need to make sure you understand that that was not his beginning. Are y'all hearing me? That was not the beginning of Jesus. You remember last week I told you we, not, we can't get confused over his birth and his beginning. Because according to this text, all that the Bible teaches, yeah, yeah, everything that the Bible teaches, Jesus was around in the beginning. And actually, he was a part of even the whole creation. Jesus was already there. Because when we look at this text in light of what we have learned already, it reads like this. In the beginning was the Word. And what do we learn? Who do we learn that word is? Jesus. Okay. In the beginning was the word. And the word, who? Jesus was with God. And the word, who? Was God. Is that in your book? Yeah, the text focuses and it forces us to deal with the doctrine of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Are y'all hearing me now? Y'all listen real hard now. It is not an easy concept to understand and a whole lot of folk don't believe it. As a matter of fact, they think it's something wrong with us because we believe it. But although there are many who don't believe it, it is what God has revealed in Scripture about himself. And if God, yeah, has presented or revealed it in Scripture about himself, then I believe that we ought to believe everything that God says. This is who God says that he is. Doctrine of teaching of the Trinity states that in the unity of the Godhead, there are three eternal and co equal persons. It's going to make sense in a minute. In the Godhead, that is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. 
Are y'all hearing me? I, I love to hear my son teach. My son teaches this. He refers to the Godhead as, as, as three who's and a what. <laughs> yeah, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Let's get it right now. The Father is not the Spirit. The Spirit is not the Son. The Son is not the Father. But the Father is God. The Son is God. And the Spirit is God. Am I making any sense? Are y'all here? You ain't got to understand it. Just believe it. Are y'all hearing me? Understanding will come as we study the Word of God. That, that's, what, that, that's, that's what we know and we teach in the church as the Holy Trinity. Not, 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 not three gods now. Don't get it mixed up. See, somebody's going to try to confuse you and tell you, yeah, y'all got three gods. Not three gods, but God in three equal persons. Y'all follow me now. Follow me now. God in three co-equal persons. We, and, and really, the truth of the matter is we know more about it than what we think. At least we've been singing about it. Yeah, yeah. All of us grew up singing, holy, holy, holy. Lord, Lord God Almighty, early in the morning, our song shall rise to thee. And then we go down to the end of that verse. And what do we say? God in three persons. Blessed. Trinity. Are y'all hearing me? We've been singing it all the time. We, we just didn't know what we were talking about. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah, we believe in the Holy Trinity. There, there are those who criticize and those who don't believe what we believe, and that's all right. You let people believe what they want to believe. This ain't for arguing. This is just so that you'll know what it is you believe. There are those who call us Three God people. <laughs> they say we got three gods, but your answer to them is no, we don't believe in three gods. We believe in one God who expresses himself in three persons. Y'all hearing this? One God who expresses himself in three persons. The, the, the Hebrew word, the, the, there's a Hebrew word, and, and it's sort of a strange word. Let me spell it for you. E-C-H-A-D. E-C-H-A-D. And it's pronounced in a strange way. It's pronounced akkad. Akkad. And, it, yeah, and that, that, that akkad or ekad word, when, yeah, it, it means one with multiple components. <laughs> Y'all hear me? So in Genesis one in one, when it says, in the beginning, God, God is referred to as Elohim. Are y'all hearing me? He's referred to as Elohim. That, yeah, that, that, that's that God in three persons. That's, that's not one. That's more. Are y'all hearing me? He, he, he had three multiple. He's in multiple components. In Genesis 2 and 24, that word, same word is used. The same word is used when, when God made the woman and he put man and woman together and said, the two shall become one. That's the same word. Y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah. Adam is still Adam. <laughs> thank God. And Eve is still Eve. Somebody say, thank God. But he took the two <laughs> and they became one. Are y'all hearing this? In the book of Numbers, you remember when they sent the spies out to go spy out the promised land and they brought back grapes. Yeah, when they come back, they didn't bring one grape. The word that is used is they brought, brought grape, but they brought one cluster. But it was a whole lot of grapes. Are y'all hearing me? I'm trying to clear us up on the Trinity. Jumps right out at you. In Genesis 1 and 26, when God created man, it jumps right out in your face. God said, let us make man. That sounds like somebody that wasn't by himself, doesn't it? Let us make man in our image. That is God in three persons. 
some of y'all still ain't quite getting it. Let me, let me just see if I can bring it just a little bit closer. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. All of them are armed forces. But every one of them got a different function. Are y'all hearing me? They all got their own function. Somebody, somebody will tell you, let me go on and get you right. Because when you go out and tell everybody about the sermon today, somebody going to tell you that the word Trinity ain't even in the Bible. <laughs> and, and let me go ahead and tell you, don't argue with them. Don't argue with them. You can argue because the word is not there, but the teaching is there. Are y'all hearing? The word is not there, but the teaching is there. The truth of the matter is the word rapture is not in the Bible either. Y'all hearing me? The word rapture is not in the Bible, but the teaching of the rapture is there. Although the word is not there, all of us up in here firmly believe that one day the trumpet will sound. And the Lord is going to step out of, are y'all hearing me, step on a cloud, and we will be caught up to meet him in the air. The word ain't there, but the teaching is there. Am I making any sense? So, as we head toward Christmas, I want to make sure that we understand that Jesus was there from the beginning, we celebrate the time that he came in a body and was born on earth. But I want you to know that he was there from the beginning. According to this text, not only was he there in God, are y'all hearing me, with God in the beginning, but the text makes it clear that not only was he there, not only was he with God, but he was God. And my brothers and sisters, this is the doctrine of the Trinity, where what we believe about God. This is what we believe about God. And yeah, yeah, one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, we're going to deal later on as we get on in the series. I'm going to deal more about the Holy Spirit. But right now, this passage takes us to, to deal with God the Father and God the Son. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God, let, let, let me show it to you in another place. That's, that's, that's proof right there, John 1, 1. That's first. But let me show it to you in a practical way in the same book. Turn over to John 14. You know more about this than what you really realize you know. John, keep, keep your finger in, in, that, in that. Just watch this. Watch this. John 14. Jesus has gathered in the upper room. He's they're having the Passover meal with his disciples. These are people that have given up everything to follow him, his disciples. They, they, they've got all of their confidence in him. They believe in him. They're following him everywhere he goes. They are there, and now they're sitting around the table, and after, after dinner, Jesus is saying to them, I'm going away. I'm, I'm going to leave you. And then that's not all, he says. He says, where I'm going, you, you can't go with me now, right now. You, I'm going away. Now, get this. We have given up everything to follow you. And you sitting here at this table telling us that you're getting ready to leave us. Y'all hearing this? And, and you got the nerve to tell us where you're going. We can't go. But then Jesus saw the look on their faces, and he says, uh, but, 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 but he looked at their faces, and he said, uh, but let not your heart be troubled. That's, that's John 14. You, you hear that every time you go to a funeral. He said, it ain't a funeral sermon, but that's, that's where it came from. They, Jesus, he saw the looks on their faces. He said, but let not your heart be troubled. The reason why they believe in God, you believe also in me. You, be, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. I, let, let's stay right with the word. In my father's house, there are many mansions. In my father's house, 
there are mansions. See, we build, we, we call ourselves building mansions down here. We brag because we got a lot of room. My father got a house with mansions in it. <laughs> in my father's house. There are many mansions. If it wasn't so, I wouldn't have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I will come again and receive you under myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Are y'all hearing me? Now, Jesus is making this wonderful speech. And Thomas, <laughs> y'all know Thomas. He gets a dirty deal. We call him Doubting Thomas. I like to call him Verifying Thomas. <laughs> yeah, Thomas, Thomas sort of breaks in. It's right. Read, follow me in the Bible there. Thomas says, uh, uh, Lord, <laughs> Now, the rest of these fellas can sit around here like they holy and know what you're talking about. But let me just tell you, let me just be honest with you. Since you're talking about leaving and we don't come down to this, let me just be honest with you. Lord, we don't know where you're going. <laughs> How in the world, if we don't know where you're going, how in the world can we know the way? <laughs> Is that in your book? Yeah, yeah that's what Thomas, Thomas said. We, we don't even know where you're going. Yeah. How can we know the way? Jesus looked around at Thomas and listened to, listen to what he said. Listen, listen for the Trinity. Jesus says, I am the way. <laughs> Not a way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Now, look at the next statement. Look at the next statement. Here it is right here. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, after we get through with this conversation, you know him. And have seen him. Am I making any sense? No, 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 no. That ain't the end of the conversation. Now it just opened open the door for, see, you know, some folks sit around, they want to say something, and they'll never say anything until somebody else say something. And then when somebody else say something, then everybody want to cry. Their, now, now, now that they're in the conversation, now Philip joins in. Read this right there in the book. Philip, Philip joins in. Listen to, what, listen, listen to what Philip said. Lord, I'm listening to all this stuff you're talking about. I'm listening to what you're saying to him. And I believe what you're saying is right. But I tell you what, let's go on and settle this thing. Verse 8, Lord, show us the Father. And it suffices. In other words, yeah, just go on and let us see the Father. And we'll let this thing alone. Are y'all hearing me? We'll, we'll be all right. Yeah, but you've been talking about this father, our father in heaven. You've been talking about him. Just show him to us. And we will be all right. But now listen real closely at what Jesus said. Listen to the next statement. Jesus says to Philip, have I been so long time with you? And yet, has thou not known me? Philip. Are y'all hearing me? He, right there, look at it, that has seen me has seen the Father. How are you standing there saying, show us the Father? You've been with me all the time. All this time we've been together. How is it we've been together all this time and you're still telling me, show us? the Father. We ain't through. We ain't through. Verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The word that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me. He's the one that's doing the work. Are y'all hearing this? Believe me. 
I am in the Father and the Father in me. Are we all together here? Am I arriving with everybody I left with? We, we, we through now, but, 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 but that's, that's as far as I'm going to go today because I believe that the people of God, as we get ready for this great celebration, we need to know who it is, and we need to know what it is that we are celebrating. When we talk about that baby that was born in Bethlehem, are y'all hearing me? You and I need to know that it was more than a baby. Are y'all hearing me? We need to know that it was more than just another baby born in Bethlehem. We need to understand that, that we were looking uh, in the face of God. Are y'all hearing me? We need to know uh, not only who it was that came, uh, but we ought to understand why Jesus came. Are y'all hearing me? We ought to understand uh, that God so loved this world. Are y'all hearing this? Yeah, as terrible as the world had become, as lost as the world was, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. I'm just trying to tell you that everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Are y'all hearing me? Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Not only who came, but you need to know why he came. You need to know why he picked up my cross and put it on his shoulder. You need to know why it was that he stretched his arms on an old rugged cross. You need to know who it was uh, that was hanging there on the cross, uh, shedding his blood for us. Uh, you need to know why, yeah, he came to shed his blood. Uh, somebody said it like this, what uh, can wash away my sin? Nothing uh, but the blood uh, of Jesus. What? Uh, can make me whole again, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yeah, he died, they laid him in a tomb, but early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand, power to heal, power to save, yeah. power to pick me up and turn me around. Yeah. When I was a child, uh, we used to sing a song around the church yeah, that said, everybody ought to know, yeah. everybody ought to know, yeah. everybody ought to know uh, who Jesus is. Uh, he's a lily uh, of the valley. Uh, he's a bright uh, and morning star. Yeah. He's a Ferris uh, of 10,000 uh, that everybody Everybody, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. My hope and my prayer for everybody up in here is that we're just not celebrating because everybody else is celebrating. That we know, we know who it is, we know what it is, and we know why we celebrate. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Are you here this morning? If you don't know him, you need to know him. If you don't know him, you need to get to know him for yourself. Thou will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shall be saved. 